early October and it is the best time of year. Hunting season is finally here and it couldn't have come soon enough. In the last episode, we took a look at all the work we've been doing leading up to this point and now finally it's time to get out and kill some deer. Now today we're going to take a look at the first hunt of the season for Ross and Kendall as they head to Wisconsin. We'll follow along with the rest of the team as we go through some last minute preparation. We're going to show you some of the target hit list bucks we're going to be shooting for this year. And then last, we're going to talk through a couple important things to remember when it comes to bow hunting practice, and then walk through some early season hunting strategies. So first, let's follow along as Ross and Kendall head to the Cheesehead State. We're leaving Iowa right now, heading back to Wisconsin. We have uh, the opener tomorrow for bow season, so we'll be hunting there for most of September. The place we're hunting, we, Ross and his dad have had some pretty good luck on in years past. And Russia, pretty nice buck there opening day one year. Going with his dad to an Amish farm in central Wisconsin, and hopefully, we get lucky and see something. Just got done with work at noon today, so Ken and I raced over or up to Wisconsin. Kendall's gonna go sit in a different spot tonight. Um, she's gonna film herself and I think I'm just gonna sit with my dad because where she's gonna be sitting is not very good for, for two people. So we'll see if we can get a doe tonight. We're not too stressed. In the meantime, the rest of us were hard at work with some last minute preparation. So what I've done, I made a trail. Um, every one of them, I've, been, I've never been in there. That is thick and it is full of rubs from last year. I mean, every tree is shredded. And right here, they all come to my, right to my lick here, my marrow lick. And then you can see down here, I got another one that goes through and they're all within 25 yards of my stand. They all kind of bottleneck right to here. 20, and then they head out to the beans. There's, you can see over here, there's a bean field right out here. And then uh, on the other side, all this thick stuff, actually right straight through there, down this trail, there's apple trees and cornfield right through there. Right there's my stand, you can see it up there. Anyway, that's where, uh, that's where I'm gonna be haunting. I mean, it's a good spot here. So I got tons of corn and borders this. And it's not very big, so I'm gonna have to sneak in here. It's gonna have to be a perfect win. All right, 64 days left. Let's do this. Well, we are just on a new property. It's the middle of September and doing some last minute scouting because I just picked up a new farm to hunt this fall. There seems to be just a highway deer traffic coming across that piece of high ground attaching to this ridge behind me. I'm following down here. And our stand here is up, up here looking over the swamp. This could also be a good spot during the rut. Just think a lot of deer are going to cruise this high ground here. We got it all set. We're going to get out of here, pop up a trail camera, and uh, come back sometime that time. I'm going to be hanging this tree stand up on what used to be an old pipeline cut over. Um, so it's kind of a, a long clearing right in the middle of the swamp, and a lot of deer travel down it. Had some good success there in the past, and a lot of deer moved through that. Where our hunting camp is is up in the northern Michigan big woods, so it's pretty tough to pattern deer. There's no agriculture or anything. So when you find an area where deer tend to prefer traveling, when they do come through, you have to focus on that. So I've hunted there a couple times with my portable tree stand. Finally, I decided it's time to put a permanent one up there and um, make it easier to sneak in there opening morning, and hopefully. Get a crack at the big northern Michigan swamp lot. All right, just got back from Gander Mountain. Got my tags for 2012. Ready to rock and roll. Got a couple bucks, a couple doe tags. Got about two weeks left and uh, just putting the final touches and everything. Going up to our hunting camp up in northern Michigan where we'll be doing some, some work up at our cabin and prepping some things. So we'll be heading out there to hunt during gun season in the middle to late November. So we're still almost two months out from that, but we're gonna put our mother's stand out there and get things ready for the season.
Wednesday, September the 23rd. We've got a week until the opener here in Michigan and uh, doing some last minute stand preparation here on one of the farms that I hunt. I've neglected this place most of the summer just due to the fact that I've been super busy. And uh, they put corn in on this entire farm. It's about a 90 acre piece. There's about 15 acres of hardwood timber over here to my left. And uh, I have a few stands set up along the edge of the timber here. And so I'm gonna st check those couple of stands really quick, do some last minute trimming. I don't like to typically do it this close to the season, but I am gonna try to stay out of here until at least probably the middle of, the, of next month. So it'll be about three weeks, it'll, it'll cool down. I know there's a couple good bucks in here and I'm just gonna get the trimming done and hopefully slip out without disturbing any deer. So stay with us. This is the field where the wedding was at. Yeah, Playing it to all its radishes, clover, beets, and right on the edge of it, I got my first ever gun shack. And I can sit in the rain and have fun in business in the killing field here. I shot my eight point last year out of that lighter stand over there. And I just checked that other stand up there, so getting excited. We're almost here. Hopefully all that hard work is going to pay off for the big buck this fall. We've got some good ones to chase. So let's take a look at some of the hit list bucks for the fall of 2012. I've developed kind of a light hit list of bucks that I'd like to target. Um, right now, the main farm I'm hunting on, actually all the farms I'm hunting on, all have soybeans on them. So, you know, during the summer I was able to get a good look at some of those deer. And we also got some trail camera pictures. So we're going to cross our fingers and hope a couple of these guys still can be seen. I have two different farms that I hunt. One, one farm is in the northern part of the state. The northern farm is actually the farm that I got the two biggest bucks on this summer. Uh, the first one here is a buck that I like to call the G3 buck. He has super long G3s and uh, a really big frame. The next buck on the list is a buck that I call the Freak. It's a fairly good sized main beam, but he just doesn't have anything else for points. So both of those deer are definitely on my hit list for Ohio and I uh, hope to see them when I get to the woods. The best deer I've seen um, across the board is a buck we call the triple threat. We call him that because he has a drop time, he has inside time, and he has a split brow time. So he's kind of got the whole package. So we're hoping, since he's without belt here, maybe he's going to stick around. So we're crossing our fingers, hoping to cross paths with the triple threat this year. Now out in Iowa, me, Pete, Ross, and Kendall have some great bucks we're chasing too. This here is a buck called the Big Nine. He's definitely near the top of the list. Pete actually got film with him this year. Right here we've got a buck we call Kickers. He's got a nice kicker off his left main beam. This buck here is thumbs up. This is the deer that Pete saw actually last year. We've done all the preparation and we've got the big bucks to chase, but none of it really matters if you can't hit the bloody thing. So if you're a bow hunter, it's super important to get out there and practice with your equipment. First thing though, you gotta go get your bow set up. Early this spring, we got some new trophy ridge accessories on our bow nice new quiver, sight, and rest. Then we headed to our favorite pro shop, got it all paper tuned, cut some new arrows. Now we're shooting all year round, but now that the season's starting, there's a few key things we're keeping in mind as we practice. So number one, you need to focus on form. This is important all year round, but especially as we're getting almost to the point when you're gonna be in the stand, you really want to key in on those little glitches you might have. When it comes to your grip, the most important thing is to not over grip. So don't squeeze that riser too hard. You really want to keep a loose grip, put your, put your riser right there on kind of the lifeline in your hand, and let it, let it pull hard against there. Number two, you want to focus on your release. A lot of people have a tendency to want to punch the trigger on their release, and that can cause some herky-jerky shots. So you really want to focus on setting back there and slowly squeezing and even really pulling your shoulder back until it almost surprises you and releases. If you can really focus on those two things, you're going to have a lot more accurate shot. Second, we want to focus on kind of the difficulty of our target practice. Now when it comes to your usual hunting situation, we're usually shooting a 15, 20, 30 yard shot with our bows. So what's great is to practice at much farther distances. So get good at shooting 50, 60, 70 yards because once you start practicing at that range, when you're actually out there on a tree stand and a deer is at 20 yards, it's a chip shot. So make sure you practice harder to make the actual hunt easier. And last really is the timing of your practice. We talked about practicing before the season, but it's also important to practice during the season. A lot of people, once they start heading to the deer woods, they stop shooting their bow. 
You can't do that. You really need to continuously shoot your bow, stay up on it, and maintain that muscle memory. So, you know, what I try to do is, is just make a concerted effort to get out there once a day, shoot a couple arrows. Just keep your body in tune, and that way you'll be ready when the moment of truth comes. So a couple key things to think about when it comes to deciding where to hunt those first couple days. I think the most important thing to focus on right off the bat is food sources. So we all know in the early season, deer are still on that bed to food pattern. So as you're planning where you want to hunt the first couple days, think through what those top food sources are. In a lot of spots around the country, you could, you could key in on green fields. Um, also a big thing right now is acorns. There's a lot of acorns in the ground, so if you can find that oak tree where they're really dropping, that's going to be a major draw for deer. Now a lot of people, they get a food plot or a nice feed field, and they want to set right on top of it. Sometimes that can work out. You know, if you know exactly where a buck is coming in and out of, you can set up right there and kill them on the first time. But if you're not really sure, you kind of run a risk if you're hunting right on the edge. You know, take for example, if you set right on the edge of the field, the buck comes in 100 yards down the other end, now at dark you need to get out of the stand and get out of there. If you don't have a really great exit strategy set up, you can spook that buck and never see him again. So sometimes the better thing to do is set up maybe 40, 50, 60 yards off of the food source, catch them as they head there, and you're even going to have a better chance of catching them during daylight than doing that. Another thing you can focus on during this time of year are water sources. You know, especially with the drought, water is a more difficult to find commodity than ever before. So set up on a little secluded water source and you're going to have a lot of deer leaving their beds and heading there to get a little drink of water before heading out to feed in the evening or in the mornings you're going to catch deer on their way back to bed, dropping by the pond and then going off to their little secluded bedding area. So find that water source, set up on it and you can really see some success this time of year. Another really important thing this time of year is the fact that we have a small window of a special opportunity for these first couple hunts. You've got a chance to get in there before deer know you're hunting them. So it's not a bad time to hunt one of your best spots. All right, now I'm back in the field uh, where the wedding was this summer. I got a tree stand up behind me here. I just gotta scurry up there real quick and make sure the strap's good on it. Double check everything before I jump in it. But if you've got a really couple of great areas where you've got high hopes, go in there the first night or two, hunt that spot. Try to get the buck on the first time out. But once you're in there once or twice, back out and let that spot sit until the time when the deer are really going to be moving, which is the rut. So the hard work is all done, almost. Now it's time to get out there and start chasing those big bucks. So hopefully when you check in next time, we'll be able to show you those first couple hunts and hopefully some big deer on the ground. Shoot again? Yeah! Alright.